Governor Yahya Bello and the Social Democratic Party candidate Muritala Ajaka is in a tough battle over Kogi state elections. And court grants factional Labour Party in Imo state right to contest in the upcoming elections. This is Cross Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. The political tussle between the Kogi state governor Yahya Bello and the Social Democratic Party SDP candidate Alhaji Muritala Yakubu Ajaka is taking a new twist as the electorates get prepared for the November 11 governorship election. The election, which is less than 150 days away, is already generating tension. The National Working Committee of the Social Democratic Party SDP calls on Nigeria's president, Bola Tinubu, to investigate the recent attack on its governorship candidate, Mr. Muritala Ajaka. Nigeria's electoral body, the Independent National Electoral Commission, has scheduled to hold the governorship election of the Kogi State, of Kogi State, I beg your pardon, on the 11th of November 2023. Joining us live to discuss this is Rufus Ayenigba. He is the National Publicity Secretary of the Social Democratic Party, SDP. Thank you so much, Mr. Ayenigba, for joining us. Good evening. Thank you. Great. Um, let's go straight to it. Most recent uh, about the Kogi state elections is the fact that um, uh, a story was put out talking about the attack on your gubernatorial candidate. Um, let's talk about that briefly before we go into, um, you know, other things. Um, what exactly do you, as a party spokesperson, uh, what do you think would have precipitated or could have, you know, allowed for such uh, an attack to happen. Is Kogi State known for these kinds of political violence? Has it ever been the case? I said thank you for bringing this to the table. We, uh, we have a governorship uh, election in Kogi State or uh, scheduled for November 11, and we have uh, uh, 18 political parties participating. The SDP happens to be one of the frontline um, political parties in the race, which uh, Alhaji Murtala Yakubu Ajaka as uh, the SDP candidate. Prior to this time, prior to the time he became a candidate, he was actually a member of the ruling party, and um, they had their issues there, the internal contradictions and all of that. And uh, he moved to the SDP, where he was able to get uh, the the kind of ambience needed for for a democratic process, he could, uh, a level playground for everyone, for anybody to be shot up uh, on the ground of um, either sentiments of uh, ethnicity, race, religion, or whatever. Or class. So the party provided the platform and uh, he contested the primaries and got the ticket and was uh, nominated, uh, validly nominated by the party. But the truth of the matter is, um, ever since he became the candidate of the party, obviously the, the ruling party in the state um, recognized the fact that he is a major threat to, that is a candidate to beat. And that is what um, accounts for all the attacks on him and um, all the shenanigans going on in the state. So you just literally played into my next question because I was going to ask, as, as, as he has obviously been a member of the ruling party before now and then cross capitated into your party, I was, I was going to ask what sort of threat he might pose to um, you know, the ruling party. Again, you, no. have, you have mentioned that there are 18 other contestants why should he be a target? Now, uh, the threat that he, he poses to the ruling party uh, derived from the fact that uh, uh, he was a frontline uh, as uh, aspirant to, 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 to clinch the ticket of that party. But somehow, he was manipulated out. He was uh, pondered out of the party. 
and um, due to his popularity. And uh, if you are popular, you are popular. Anywhere you get to within the constituency, you will be reckoned as, uh, as such. So, it's, um, so when he was uh, unable to be allowed to uh, perform his, um, his um, fundamental right of uh, contesting to vote and be voted for, he moved into the, to, to a place that um, is, uh, that provides the essential ambience for 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 the democratic. So that is how popular is. he is. Um, he moved in, and since he moved in, he has become the major the major force. They are saying the, the Ajaka movement has become a movement, um, a big movement in, in going to this electoral contest for the global race in global state. I asked a question that I didn't necessarily get an answer to, so I'm going to rephrase it. At the beginning, I okay. said, um, I do not know Kogi State to be this ruthless when it comes to elections, nor the violence. Yeah. Maybe a few of it yeah. could have been recorded in the past elections, the presidential elections. We saw, allegedly, how the governor of the state excavated a part of the road to stop some contestants from getting across to the other side. But I want yes. to know, but I want to know, um, why would all of a sudden this election that is keenly contested become so violent? Is Kogi State now gradually becoming um, a haven for electoral well, violence? Well, thank you. Uh, there's no denying the fact that uh, Kogi, the, the record of Kogi State in elections, uh, uh, the records have not been that uh, pleasant. We recall what happened in 2019, how um, violence was unleashed on the people, even leading to the killing, gruesome murder of a woman, a, a, a woman um, leader in, a, in, in one certain uh, local government in the Eastern Centurion District, um, that, who was uh, lynched and uh, killed and born alive in, 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 her, in her home. And several other um, incidences of violence in, in the 2019 election. So we, um, to say that uh, Kogi has suddenly become, uh, has suddenly become uh, a violent state is, may not be correct. Violence has been associated with Kogi elections, especially the Dubai elections. And uh, we recall in 2019, uh, the action against uh, on our on our um, state uh, secretariat there, when we had a, a female governorship candidate uh, in the name of Natasha Koti, that uh, um, hoodlums had to burn down the, the, the state secretariat, even to the point of beating her up physically, physical assault, and several other uh, acts of um, assault and intimidation of uh, so. Uh, we just hope and pray that, uh, and in 2019, that the attack on our governorship candidate happened there, right there in the presence of uh, the INEC chairman and the commissioner of police and all of that. The records are there. So uh, we are not nothing new. It's just that the dimension is getting uh, so worrisome. Mm. It used to be, uh, uh, it used to be the party in power and possibly PDP, but PDP has become, uh, has been, is back to, to the, the background. It is SDP now that is the major focus because SDP is the major threat to, uh, to the government of the day. Since you are the spokesperson of the party, let me ask you a very direct question before we go to other issues. Uh, before, yeah. before Ajaka moved from the APC to your party, um, can you explain to me, why your party did not necessarily have a, a governorship candidate before Ajaka moved? Did well, you have, yeah, did there, you have there, someone? There was a candidate. We, there was a candidate. We had, uh, you know, the law allows uh, a party to, to change. Um, there's a window for a change of a candidate, uh, provided by the INEC, uh, by the Electoral Act and all of that. That was what uh, we, uh, Ajaka explored and uh, became. We had a candidate, but uh, when Ajaka came in, um, the candidate who was there voluntarily withdrew his uh, candidature. And uh, Ajaka, so 
that was what really happened. So it was a election, a primary election was conducted, and when Ajaka was to come in, uh, a replacement uh, primary had to be conducted, and that was what the process was. Hmm. So it was not as if there was a vacuum or there was no candidate. We had a validly nominated candidate before the, uh, the window of the substitution came in and uh, Ajaka exploded. Let's talk about um, some of the accusations that Ajaka uh, has leveled against the governor, the sitting governor, Yahya Bello. He has said, and I'll quote, he said, Bello is in the business of framing up political opponents as criminals. Um, now, apparently, um, in a statement uh, signed by the director of communications, uh, Farouk um, Audu, uh, which is of the campaign organization um, of the Kogi, um, well, he accused the Kogi state government of um, misinforming the public. Now, we obviously know that uh, Governor Yaya Belu is the sitting governor, um, and many would say um, that whatever comes from um, the governor's or the governor's spokesperson would want, everybody would want to believe that that is not fake news. But when your candidate says that the public is being misinformed and uh, he's framing his political opponents as criminals, what exactly does this mean? And of course, I know that you are from Kogi State, so you'd have a, have a clearer picture of what exactly is happening here. Uh, the simple answer to that is uh, when you look at the record, you'll recall that. Um, the government of the day in Kogi State, um, even within his political party, uh, there had been cases of people being uh, roped into and being tagged terrors and all of that for not uh, falling in line doing the bidding of uh, the authorities. The specific uh, uh, point here, the specific example, was the case of about eight or seven or eight House of Assembly members of the members of that party that were tagged terrorists because, um, and they were suspended even from the house, they were from sitting until their constituents um, rose out in strong defense of their uh, integrity and all of that. And um, they had to obtain that uh, and uh, pass those charges and brought them back. So what we are saying is that it is not, um, it is not a far-fetched um, uh, assertion that if you have issues with the government of the day, you could. All Nigerians recall the, 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 the traumatic experience of the Senator Dino Milaye with the government of the day in Kogi in the past. Now it is a jaka has become the, 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 the nightmare. And so all sorts of um, uh, profiling, negative profiling is being uh, directed at him. So, to say that uh, for the, our candidate to have uh, declared that if you have issues with the government or uh, with the governor, you will be, uh, will be, will be profiled as a terrorist or whatever cannot be uh, disputed because it has happened even to his own uh, members in the same party in the past. Eight members of the APC in the House of Assembly were tagged and charged for terrorism or whatever and framed up. They were not um, free from all of that until uh, people uh, rose in strong defense and uh, the, the public outcry, outcry was, uh, was overwhelming. And they had to uh, remove that tag from them and uh, got them back to the fold. So it is not um, out of place to say that um, uh, anybody who is a political opponent who, who poses a major threat to the, the government of the day um, automatically becomes uh, um, uh, a criminal. It, it could be, he could be tagged just to, just to discredit them and uh, give them a bad name. Let's, let's talk more about the personality of your governorship candidate here. Let's talk about Ajaka and his capability or his ability to deliver. Um, now, you have said rightly that he used to be a member of the All Progressive Congress, working closely with the sitting governor, and now, of course, is a member of the SDP. Um, wh why should the average Kogi person look to the SDP 
uh, for saving or for good governance. Um, I mean, there are those who would swear that uh, the governor of Kogi State has done his best in putting Kogi on the map. And there are also others who would say that he's not been able to live up to any of the promises that he's made. Why should your candidate be the one to get the votes? Well, it's simple to, to put on the table. Uh, the SDP has um, a very beautiful, robust um, manifesto that, um, and a relatable history. Uh, this is a party that is known for social justice, a party that is um, out there to, 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 to serve the common man, is a pro-people and pro-Nigeria political party. So having um, a Jaka coming in with his Z dynamism and um, the, the energy that he carries, he's going to run with that manifesto and, 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 and the ideology of the party and just make life more meaningful for the uh, average uh, uh, co guide. Um, all these percentage salaries, all these uh, no, no pension payments, and the basic amenities, uh, social infrastructure that uh, the, the people have uh, not seen for, the, for, for, for years, will begin to see a new lease of our life, life. So basically, it is uh, just doing the right things and doing um, justice to delivery on mandate is what he's going to do. Uh, and uh, you just agree with me that if we are able to get a, a man who who has a vision and who has the the right mind to do uh, to unleash the, the latent potential of the state, is that in tourism, in agriculture. The, the human goes a human resource that the state is fresh with. Kogi has no business uh, with poverty. Kogi state is bordered with about 10 states. And what that means is that you are having close to close, over 40, close to 50 million of, uh, Nigerians around you to do. To, to. And that is a huge market that you can explore in terms of transportation, in terms of uh, tourism. Uh, in terms of um, even uh, investment opportunities and all of that. And so if you have someone who is willing and who has the right uh, understanding and the right uh, orientation about uh, social development and, uh, and the right uh, people's investment, who will get the state going and uh, remove from the, will change the narrative of uh, a state that is uh, nothing is working, uh, because uh, the potentials have been largely untapped. Hmm. Finally, for, for, for uh, Anajaka, many people would want to, for those who do not know him before now, um, what has he done that... Oh, no, he has not, it's not that he's a complete... Uh, no, 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 uh, yes, I know, I know he's been in the political circle, but for the yeah, average yeah. person who Ajaka, wants to know Ajaka, who he is, Ajaka, what has he done Ajaka. that would... That would make people say that, well, we've seen what he's done here, and then we can trust him with the state and the affairs of Kogi State. What has he done? Yes, uh, uh, Ijeka has been in the political system for over 15 years. Uh, don't forget, he, he, he was a member of the National Working Committee of the ruling party as the Deputy National uh, Publicity Secretary of the party for, for years, and uh, sitting at the highest level of decision making and uh, of the party, and um, the record of what he has done uh, in in touching lives in Kogi speak volume uh, across the the three senatorial districts. So, and this is in his own private capacity. So, how much more if he has a platform of the state, uh, the instrument of uh, power to to sit over the affairs of the state, to administer, to uh, to bring. Um, creative ideas and creative solutions to uh, challenges as well. you, the difference will be, will be felt. Greatly, um, Kogi, we don't need, um, we are not looking for any miracle worker. We, what we need is just somebody with a basic understanding of uh, development and the right vision and understanding of uh, right investment in unleashing our potentials, getting people inspired, galvanizing the populace. And um, 
attracting I'm sorry, I'm sorry, when you say getting people inspired, I mean, if we're all looking for, um, you know, one of those uh, inspirational um, people, then we'd probably go on Instagram or go to your pastor for inspiration. Well, is that uh, why would we have to vote for people. somebody who's going to tell uh, us to aspire that to... You have to get people galvanized to uh, positive actions, to believe in the state, to really even look in the direction of that. A lot of people in diaspora that they don't have any business. They're not even in touch with the state in the last uh, 10, 8 years because the, the congenial environment is not there. So if you have somebody who make life, who make um, living in Kogi, uh, putting the basic uh, infrastructure in place, they'll get inspired to look in the direction of the state to bring their own contribution in terms of um, uh, their foreign direct investment, in terms of bringing their expertise and uh, network to the table to add value to uh, the, the development process. That is what I mean by getting people inspired and galvanized. Well, uh, I want to say thank you, uh, Rufus Ayeniba, I beg your pardon, this is the National Publicity Secretary of the Social Democratic thank Party, so SDP. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we wish you all the best come thank November 11th. I appreciate you. Thank all you. All right. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we will be discussing the court's approval of the Labour Party faction to participate in the Emo State election. Stay with us. We'll be right back.